What's going on, y'all? Episode 18 of the show LA. I'm D Boone. I'm AP, man. We got some heat for you today. Um, we got a few legends out of Bishop Amat. Pops, Dylan McCutcheon, SC Great, um, NFL vet in the studio today with his son Dyson, who's just blowing up this year. Um, ton of Power Five offers have come since the offseason, SC, Cal, Notre Dame. But we're gonna be sitting down with these two guys and uh, breaking down their last season and uh, what we have in store for 2020. But stay tuned. And first and foremost, man, we got some dope highlights uh, for you from the passing down in NorCal. The NorCal Regional is heating up this weekend, so we're gonna get into some seven on seven highlights and we're gonna break right into the show. I bet it's not. And tell them premium, we coming for you. They don't get this tournament, but we coming for you. Hey, now where, now where, you, guys, no. where are you guys from? LA. We want to give a big shout out and a big thanks to our partner, Zort Sports. Zort Sports is an absolutely free tournament and league scheduling app. You can get it on iPhone or Android. Zorts underscore sports on Twitter and Zort Sports on Instagram. Go ahead and check it out. Again, it's so easy to use. A dummy could do it. Schedule your next tournament or league on the Zort Sports app.
episode 18 of the show LA. Special guest in the studio today. To my right, to your left, Dyson McCutcheon, man. Mr. Do Everything at Bishop Amat High School. Class of 2021. And recruiting has been heating up, man. This dude literally played everywhere on the field last year. Um, but since the offseason hit, um, he's been picking up a ton of Power 5 interest, a ton of offers. But Dyson McCutcheon, man, welcome to the show LA. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So what's been going on with the recruiting, man? Um, you got some big time schools that are knocking on your door lately um, in the off season in particular talk about those power five schools that have been coming now I've got, I've got uh, Cal Wisconsin USC Notre Dame and uh, they all been showing so love they all been showing love and uh, it's exciting I'm, I'm, I'm excited for what's gonna happen in the future now with your pops being a SC alum you know I'm sure that meant a lot to the family and to you personally talk a little bit about that SC offer you know what the conversations were like at home and then talk about your excitement man to play for uh, potentially play for a new DB coach you know and Dante Williams who came from Oregon no no he's, he's well respected I respect him very much uh, it was a big offer especially since it's the hometown team you know, I've, I've been to their games visited all that so it's a it's, a, it's an honor to be recognized by them and get an offer by them. Now, with SC, right, you must have grown up around the program, right? Been to some games, you know, growing up. Who are some of your favorite SC players of all time? Well, of course, uh, Reggie Bush, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> uh, Elijah Griffin, he's, he's a baller. Uh, I, I mentioned Ray Hill, I watched all his highlights. Uh, he's, he's great. Yeah, he's definitely locked down. Yeah. Um, now, in terms of recruiting, you know, what are you looking for at the next level? Uh, is it coaching staff? Is it, you know, st the student body? Uh, do you have a particular major that you're leaning towards? You know, what are your thoughts about the college uh, level? I would just say the, uh, the atmosphere that they're going to, that they offer, uh, how they're going to develop me. I'm just trying to get to the pros to the next level, so how they're going to develop me. I'm going to get more knowledge at my position and all that, yeah. You're an athlete, um, you're looking forward to playing DB, but like I said, that you're all over the field. You're getting reps at running back, you're at slot, you're at corner. You know, what's it like knowing that, you know, at any given point during the game, like offense or defense, your number could get called? No, it's, it's great. I love having the ball in my hands and getting a chance to make plays and all that. So it's great to be able to get the ball whenever I want or just hand offs, throw it to me, all that. So I'm, it's exciting to make all those plays. Well, with Damien leaving the college next year, you know, it's a lot of it's going to be on you, right? So, you know, what are some of those offensive packages? Man, are we going to see you in the backfield more, getting in, and getting in space? I, I think I'll be in the backfield more. I think they're going to spread it out a little bit, share the ball since uh, we're losing him. Because when he was there, he, he, he would bail us out. He was like, give the ball to two weight. So I think now they're going to spread out the ball and, and yeah. So you got, you know, you got some guys in the mix. Um, Kyron Hayes, yeah. you know, talk about some of those guys, you know, on the offensive side that are going to provide that firepower, you know, with quarterback Tobin Odell. You know, what's it going to be like? No, definitely Kyron. He's, he's, he's a big body wide receiver. He's going to go get the jump balls and all that. Uh, we got Brady. He's, he's a wide receiver. He's going to be good. He's going to be a junior. Uh, my boy Donovan Clinton, he's tight end. He gon' he gon' block and do his job. 84? Yeah, 84. Okay. Yeah, he, he he's hard too. And then of course Tobin. Uh, he's, Talk he's about close. Tobin Odell, man. He's not getting the exposure right with recruiting, but we've been to enough of mock games to know that like that dude's a player. Like he's a next level type of guy. Um, what are people gonna soon find out about Tobin Odell? So how much he works, how much he puts into the game. Uh, He's, he's the first one there, the last one to leave. He's, he just works hard. He's, he's determined to just win. He's, he's, just, he's a quarterback. What's he like on the, on the field? Because he seems quiet, right? He doesn't talk a whole lot. But, like, for example, that, that game-winning touchdown pass against Alemany when he threw it up, right? right? What, was he, what was he like on the sideline after that play? He's, he's hyped. Yeah. He's crazy. Yeah. He's hyped. He's, uh, he, he loves those big plays. He loves uh, just leading the team, yeah. No, that was an amazing game. Um, you guys knocked off Alamany. Um, but, you know, behind some great coaching, right? So your dad's out there coaching on the defensive side. And then, you know, Coach Haggerty, you know, he what, what, is, what do those guys bring to the table, man? Because at the end of the day, it's not like Amat is known for having the best of the best athletes every year, right? You guys have some guys, definitely. But, you know, overall, you guys have great coaching, right? So what does that do to, to help you guys win, man? I, I feel like they just they discipline us. I mean, we, we know what we have to do to win games, and we know we might not have the best players, but we're going 
we gonna do our job and get the job done. If they just discipline us, and I feel like that's how we beat most teams is just we're more disciplined. With regards to how the landscape is today, right? Everybody's has these super teams. So, you know, everybody's going to Bosco, everybody's going to modern day, everybody's trying to figure out the next school to go to. What is it about Amat and the tradition that you guys have um, where you guys are just, you know, balling with players, you know, from the area, right? And, and building up your squad that way. What's it like? I feel like the, the, the school builds character. We work with what we got. Uh, like I said, they, we develop kids real good. Uh, it's just the, the tradition too. The tradition is, is crazy. There's a whole bunch of NFL players that went to Alma, a whole bunch of coaches uh, that went to Alma. So it just, we just produce talent and all that. Now, student section too, man. Uh, Second to none, whenever we go to the school, man, the dog pound, they show us a lot of love, man. I think on one of your touchdown runs, uh, they were chanting the show LA as you were running into the end zone. Um, but what's it like, you know, just playing in front of that student section? Because they keep you guys in it. It's the all my family. We're all, we're all family over there. They all show love. Even at the baseball games, football players will go show love, basketball, all that. So, I mean... It's, it's great that everyone supports everybody. It's, it's hype. I, I love playing. There. Are you playing any other sports right now? Uh, I'm gonna do track. I'm doing track right now. Okay. And then in track, what are your, what are your events? I'm gonna do the 100 meter and the 200. Okay. Yeah. I used to love the track meets, man, in high school because. If you're doing one event or four events, uh, you still get to get out of school all day. Oh, yeah. So if you got one event and you run track, just listen to me. You guys run track because, you know, you get a break from having to sit in class all day and you get to just hang out. Yeah, I mean, pretty no, much, no, right? Too, yeah. So don't sleep on track. <laughs> Look, people go and, oh, you're running the 800. Yeah, but that's all I got all day and I'm chilling. So um, shout out to all the dual sport athletes, man. If you guys haven't done your research, a lot of the guys at the next level, a lot, a lot of the guys in the NFL were all dual sport guys in high school. Um, so don't sleep on how one sport can help translate into another sport. Now, this offseason, you're balling with Pro Way. Um, what's the seven on seven circuit been like for you? And, you know, your dad having gone through the gauntlet, gone through college to the pros, you know, what are what's some of the advice he gives you in how to approach seven on seven? Well, it's, 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 it's pretty much the same thing as regular season. There's a the coverages are different, mostly man, so it helps you work on your press, your man, and all that. He just says, just, just be smart, just go play, just go play ball. Yeah. Now, Pops came up in the 90s, right? Uh, how, how happy is he to see you rocking the, the, the cross <laughs> earring, man? Because that's like old school, like Barry Bonds, you know? So, I mean, you guys are bringing it back, man. You guys are taking all our yeah. swag, man. What's yeah. up? You guys love the 90s, man. Oh, this we bringing it back, man. You got to. Yeah. yeah. Let's show some love. Um, it, it, with respect to the next level, man, what, where do you see yourself? Um, wide receiver, DB, you know, or do you see yourself out wide in the slot? What's the plan? Uh, I always say I see myself at corner. And I, I, know, I know I'm not the biggest corner, so even nickel. I'll do nickel. I just, I just want to get on the field. Now, when you have those conversation, conversations with the college coaches, you know, and they extend that offer, you know, walk us through it. You know, what's a typical conversation like when you get an offer? There's a lot of kids out there who have no offers, who might not ever get one. Right. You know what I mean? So kind of put, you know, put it in perspective for those guys. What's that conversation like? Well, first, the, the, they might come to the school, hit you up on Twitter, just uh, get a feel for you. Just you guys just talk, chop it up. Uh, he'll say you, sh you should come and visit the school, see what we're about, and then uh, they give you a card, talk to you in person, and then it's the offer, and they just tell you what they have uh, at the school, what they have to offer, what they're about, and all that. And, uh, yeah. What was your who was your first offer? My first offer was BYU. Okay, so now when you got that first offer, like, what was it like? Like, did you take a lap around the house? <laughs> like, what did you do, man? Honestly, I just, I just felt accomplished, like. And I did it because uh, growing up, you see all these people getting offers, playing college, and you're like, I, I want to do that. I, that's my dream. So when I first got the offer, I was like, man, I could do this. this I could do this. Now, as somebody who, who obviously you know how to prepare for the game, um, what type of things do you do to prepare, you know, week after week? Is it is it film study? Is it technique? You know, what are you, what are you focusing on? Uh, a whole bunch of film. I like studying the opponent, knowing what they're going to do, all the route combinations and all that. A whole bunch of film and then in practice, uh, the endos and all that, we do the same stuff over and over again so you can perfect it and all that. So, 
when you come to the line um, as as a DB, right? Uh, when you're when you're walking, stepping up to the line, what's your approach? You know, dealing with a wide receiver. Just uh, looking where he's uh, lined up. If he's lined up more inside, it might be an out route. If he's lined up more outside, it's usually a fade or the inside route. So uh, mostly impressed. I like looking at the this section because you know when they shake and all that, that that doesn't move. So that's where you, it tells you where they're going. Now, as a DB, do your eyes light up when when somebody hesitates off the line or like does all this crazy that's stuff? Chance the quick press, yeah. 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 So I mean, because I've seen a lot of that, man. And my first thought is, man, if you're dancing around the line, first of all, you're messing up the route tree. Yeah. Second of all, you're probably never gonna get off into your route. Um, but it's interesting, man, to know, see from a DB's perspective, you know how you approach that. Um, now, when you're at running back, man, like you said, you're not the biggest guy out there. Mm -hmm. So I mean, are you just are you just like a, you're like a cheetah, man. You're trying not to get touched. Oh, yeah. Uh, my, my speed helps out a lot at running back. Uh, and the line does a good job. And the, the plays we run are real good. We run stretch, all that. So that helps me use my speed to get around places, try not to get hit. Yeah. How, how, uh, what kind of influence did Damian Moore have on you, you know, as a runner? Because even though he's a big guy, he could still oh, yeah. give it to you, right? So, you know, what, what did you learn from Damian? That was, I, I learned a lot. I, I This offseason, I actually asked him if he could sit down with me, look over a film, but even in practice, he'll show me some moves and I, I'll, I'll try them and it helped me out during the season. He's just, he's a, he's a hard worker too. He, uh, he perfected his craft. He, he'll run you over, juke you, he'll do all that, yeah. Now, in your opinion, uh, one of the top backs in California, Damian Moore? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Without a doubt, yeah. So so some schools definitely slept on him. Oh yeah. yeah. But uh, man, Cal, great choice. So, I mean, he's, you know, with Chris Street, it's almost like a thunder and lightning there. Right. Um, how much more attracted are you to a school like Cal, knowing that your boy Damian's up there? No, I really like Cal. Uh, it's, they're, they're real attractive. Uh, just knowing that he, like a player like him would pick a school like that, it's, uh, it's like, hey, maybe, maybe I can pick that school. So I think I'm gonna visit there, and I, I think I'm gonna go with him to visit. Yeah. Hey, that's man. You can't go wrong. One of the best uh, public universities in the in the entire nation. Academics. Yeah, exactly. Um, and how important is that for you? Because even with a school like Cal, a school like SC, you know, the alumni, everything is big time for you. You know, has has pops done a, done a, his job in explaining that to you, obviously, and, and letting you know like you know how big that is for you in oh, the future. Yeah, he, he has. He's a uh, he always tells me there's life after football. You still need your education, all that. Uh, in case football doesn't work, you still need your job, all that. So he, he makes sure I'm, I'm on my education stuff. Yeah. Do you know what you want to major in at the next level? Uh, I don't know, but I think I like business. Yeah. Now, for me, man, your guys' uh, announcer at the uh, Mock Games, man, he's he's classic, man, and his, his like voice is ringing in my head. I, we just made your video, but do you hear him, like, as you're running to the end zone when he says your name? Yeah. yeah. He's, he's been there forever, though. He's been there forever. So I, I hear him. It's, it's real cool to have an announcer like that that's been there for so long. So we're, when you were young, you were watching the Mock Games, and, and so, so were you envisioning, like, him calling your name? All the time. Yeah. All the time, but... Even when it was like the end of the half, because me and D-Moore grew up together, we'd be running on the field acting like we're about to score a touchdown all that. That's funny, man. Um, you know, you, you got to start somewhere. Right. Now, this season coming up, um, talk about the Amat schedule, right? Who do you guys have on the schedule this year? Do you guys got the schedule out yet? Yeah, we got Diamond Ranch. Then we go to La Habra. We have La Habra at home. Then we're going actually going to Washington to play all day. And then we got... Uh, then we got Chino Hills, Damien. Then we play our league, so it's Alamany, Sarah. Then Cathedral's back in our league. And then we got Shamanad and Notre Dame. So you already doing film study? Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah who, what, who are you looking forward to playing the most this season? Well, definitely La Habra. There's, there's a lot of hype around that game. They had, they had a good season last year, so I'm, I'm trying to see what they're about. And then the Washington game is going to be fun. It's out of state games, so those are always fun. It's big time. And then Alamany has a ton of talent, so we, that's what we're gonna test this to see what we're about. So this year, man, that seems like that might be the the decider, the league championship decider, like it was last year, right? You guys beating them, you guys took league. Um, what was it like when you guys took the league title, man? Because truthfully, at the beginning of the season, a lot of people didn't have you guys in there. No, it's, it's, it's cool to prove the doubters wrong. 
uh, we we knew we had to go at the start of the season like we we're gonna win the win league and we put our minds to it and we got it done talk up to the, the the camera and let let some of these young kids know uh, playing football you know what they need to do to put themselves in the position to succeed especially if they are somebody who might be undersized you know a little bit what what are what are your I, I would say top three tips on how to get yourself, you know, more exposed to colleges. Uh, I would just say put your whole, your, all your time into what you want to accomplish. Um, just work, outwork everybody, because uh, you want to go past everybody. You don't want to be the same as everybody. So I'd say outwork everybody for all your time and uh, just have fun with it. That's the biggest thing to me. Is just have fun. You're not gonna have a good time doing something that's like when you're not having fun. So I'll just say have fun with it. And then last, uh, lastly, what's the best advice that you've gotten from your dad, from Dylan, you know, in terms of your approach to the game? Uh, just like, like I said, just give it your all. If you really care about the game, if you really care about uh, your future and you want to make it to the NFL and all that, you're going to have to give it your all and just outwork everybody. All right, man. Well, Dyson McCutcheon, one of the top 2021 20, athletes in the entire nation. Um, and, and, you know, that's no BS. You know, we've, we've seen a lot of guys over the years. Um, now, really quick, your favorite players, you know, from high school growing up out here, who are some of those guys that, that you maybe saw highlights on our channel of, you know, who are some of those guys that you kind of maybe try to model your game after a little say, bit? Uh, Bookie, Darnay Holmes, uh, Elijah Griffin, all of all those people, they just, they make it happen. It's just crazy how easy they make it look and how they just hit ball out and they have fun with it. All right, man. Dyson McCutcheon, Bishop of Mont, class of 2021. Uh, thank you so much, man, for coming on the show, LA. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Cool. <laughs> All right, we got another special guest in the studio today. Uh, we got Pops, man, to my right, to your left, Dylan McCutcheon, USC legend, um, NFL player with the Cleveland Browns, man, eight-year vet. Yes, sir. Man, you, uh, you're, you're blessing us coming in the studio today, man, because not it's not often that we have somebody, you know, we had D Holmes in the studio, uh, Pro Way, you know, shout out to Pro Way. Um, but man, in, NFL player, SC, local legend, played at Amat as well. What's it like for you to see your son like literally following your same path. Yeah, no, nah, it's, uh, it's definitely a blessing, man. You know, um, for him, it's just like he's had dreams and goals. And so as a father, you just want to see your kids accomplish those goals and dreams. So um, it's exciting. You know, I'll just tell them, put in the work, you know, and uh, anything is possible. I remember, I think when we first met, man, I, I want to say it was at a modern day game. And I think we were talking on the field before the game. And uh, I want to say uh, Dyson was, you know, fielding punts or something like that. But I remember when you, you told me about your son and you told me about Damian Moore, because Damian Moore was still young then, too. Um, and he made a couple of plays that game that, you know, made made my made me realize what you were talking about. Um, you know, when did you first see it in your son that he was that guy who was going to do big things? Yeah. Um, you know, I think when he was really young, you know, there's, I think, just a guy that has grew up around football. You see certain moves, you see certain holes that they can see that other people can't see. You start to pick up on those things. And then, um, you know, as they get older, you know, sometimes kids don't always progress the same. But it was like he was progressing, you know, and still standing out. And then once he got to high school, he's just like, all right, we want to see what the game's all about, you know, at this level. Well, that first game we played against Modern Day, and so he had a matchup on Brew McCoy, and I was like, well, if you could cover that dude, you could cover anybody at this level. So he took his lumps, you know, and uh, but he got up and he fought, you know, he competed the rest of the game, and so I've just seen him to continue to develop and, uh, and get better and better. And you guys ended up winning that game, right? Because they ended up yeah. having a four minute <laughs> the game. Four yeah, <laughs> but uh, so yeah, man, threw him right into the fire. Um, now, did you ever have any any trouble coming up? Like, did, did moms always want him to play football? Yeah. Or were you guys hesitant in putting him in early? Um, we, we were a little hesitant. We put him in other sports. He played baseball, um, played a little soccer, you know, and I, I didn't want to push it on him. You know, I didn't want to give him that added pressure, but um, 
he wanted to play flag football eventually, and then all those kids wanted to transfer over to you know playing tackle, and um, you could tell that he had a genuine, genuine passion and love for the game. And so, as long as he was into it, I was going, I was going to support it. So, how did that help with his progression in terms of turning into a football player? Right, other sports, then flag, then football. Was it was the progression for you? Was, was you know would you would you do it like that over again? Uh, no doubt. Um, I'm big time for uh, multi sports. You know that's how I grew up. I grew up playing baseball. Grew up playing running track you know and I know some people believe in you know, just focus on but you know at the end of the day I think you should have fun you know have fun and enjoy these sports everyone's not going to the pros I don't care what sport it is so um, let them enjoy you know being a kid you know having fun and uh, like I said for him he enjoyed the other sports um, and uh, he just has to uh, ends up loving football you know and so um, you know I think that's the game that going forward so um, for you the proof is in the pudding right you eight-year NFL vet multi-sport guy in high school for example with baseball what did the game of baseball teach you in terms of being a football player um, I think that um, for at first and foremost it's just about competing you know in any sport it is it's about competition um, it's about produce, producing it's all about production you know, um, but I think what happens is with baseball, it's a little more, I think, one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. I mean, especially um, individual sport when you're, you know, up to bat, you know, but then uh, for football, you know, it's a team sport, you know, so it's been able to, um, you know, put, all, put it all together. Now, as, a, as an athlete at the mock coming up, and, and you know, I was talking with Dyson about this, you know, you guys had the same guy announcing the games, right, when you were playing. What's it like hearing your son's name called? Do you get those flashbacks? Or like, is it almost like deja vu for you? Yeah, no, nah, it's, uh, it's crazy, man. When I first went to Amok, um, I looked up to Eric Bien-Aimé. You know, so Eric ben me was like a big brother to me. And so I would hear his name being called at those games and that would excite me. And so it was like, when I would hear Eric ben me, then I was like, man, I wanted to hear my name one day. And then eventually I heard my name, you know. And then so for to hear that same guy uh, announcing and, uh, and saying Dyson's name, um, uh, it's like a dream come true, man. It's exciting. Um, I'll probably get more excited about him announcing his name than I ever did with him announcing my own. Now at the next level, your son's got, you know, he, his work cut out for him. He's got all the offers, you know, so now it's just the decision. But uh, I know you would love to see him in, in that Cardinal and Gold, right? Um, you, you know, at, from the beginning, it, it's a blessing, man. You know, it's like one of those uh, uh, good problems to have. You know, everyone's like, oh man, I got tough decisions. Well, there's a lot of kids out there that don't get to make that decision. So it's definitely a blessing. Um, I've always told Dyson, this is going to be his choice. So in, unless... I really felt like he was gonna make a big mistake. Um, it's gonna be his decision. So whether it's um, Notre Dame or Cal or you know if he were to choose SC, I'm gonna support him 100%. And, and I got his back. But of course, man, you know uh, uh, I ran, you know I ran around the Coliseum. You know what I'm saying I'm a Trojan, uh, Trojan for life. And so um, you know if he were to choose SC, it, it definitely would mean a lot. What's it mean for you um, personally as an SC guy and then for the potential of your son coming in to have a guy like Dante Williams just got hired from Oregon as the cornerback coach? Yeah, heard nothing but great things about him. You know, um, great recruiter. I've heard uh, he's a good coach, you know, can coach on the grass. And so for someone to be able to uh, touch your son and, and help him um, 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 get better at his position and become a better man, you know, um, that's what you want. You know, so it, it, that's definitely exciting. So you, you were coaching DBs in the NFL for a while, right? So what's your approach like with your son in looking at a coaching staff in college, right? Because you've, you've coached at the, at the top of the top. So in, in, you, in you guys analyzing a school, do you really help him break down the coaching staff and what that means? Yeah, we definitely look at the coaching staff. But at the end of the day, and we are seeing little examples of it, just like the whole Mel Tucker thing at Colorado going to Michigan State, um, it can't be all about the coaching staff. You know, at the end of the day, you have to like the university. You know, you have to be comfortable at the university because coaching jobs change all the time. You know, so um, the coaches are definitely a plus. You know, there's certain coaches that I feel like develop guys better. Um, you know, they have to be trustworthy, someone that you feel comfortable with. But um, uh, at the end of the day, you gotta like the university. Now, nowadays, there's a portal, right? Um, I mean, would you liken the portal to like free agency? You know, what, 
that's what it looks like. I mean, that's what it looks like. You know, and, and the thing is, is that, you know, I'm about loyalty. You know, so at the end of the day, I feel like sometimes it makes it a little too easy. And, you know, I believe that, you know, once you get on campus, um, it's a grind, you know, and of course, all those guys earn scholarships. So you got to work hard to, um, to get on the field, you know, and it, it, make, it makes it where you, uh, it means a little more once you get on the field. But there are times where, you know, maybe, you're not treated fairly or you're not going to play. And, you know, I, I think there should be a transfer, um, uh, a transfer portal where guys can go get better opportunities. But now I just think sometimes it's an excuse. I don't want it to use that as an excuse. I'm not, now I'm not on the field, so I just get on the field. You know, work, work, right. guys, you know, the best players usually get on the field. So Now, do you think that those players then end up making like an uninformed, uninformed decision, right, to go to a particular school? Maybe they, they have their mindset on power five or they have their mindset on high level D one should that guy have gone to a one double a you know what i mean like what's the what's your thought process on that you know i think what happens is all these guys you were the guy in high school you know and there's nothing wrong with having confidence but everyone is not a ohio state guy everyone's not an lsu guy everyone's not an sc guy you know and so i think like what i'll try to tell dyson is it's not about not having confidence in yourself but you should do your homework all right look at the roster you right know, if they brought in seven corners the year before, that ain't the place for you. You know, it's yeah. not saying that you can't compete with those guys, but you're gonna be on the bottom of the depth chart starting off. So I think just doing your homework, you know, doing your homework, and um, there's a lot of exposure at any of these D1 schools. So if you're a player, you know, and you have a dream of going to the next level, if you're a player, they're gonna find you. How much of it rests on the college, right? Like. To a certain extent, are these guys greedy just trying to bring in 8 to 10 DB? You know, why are you bringing in so many guys? Do they all want them at their school so they don't have to play against them? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, what's that thought process like? How does a coach want to bring in that many players? Yeah. Well, I mean, some people might look at it as greedy, but I think it's like it's creating depth. Gotcha. You know, I think it's about creating depth because what happens is if they're really that good, uh, maybe you have that guy for three years, you know, and then next thing you know, he's out the door and then you want someone to be able to step in and they're ready to go. Right. You know, so I think it is. Sometimes you don't want to play against that guy also. I mean, if that guy's a dude, you know, you'd much rather have him on your sideline right. than another team, uh, than another team sideline. So, but number one, I think it's about creating depth. Got you. Um, what's the biggest difference? It, in your opinion from the different levels. So you go high school to college, college to NFL. What are those biggest differences in the game? Yeah, I think it's just about the overall athleticism. You know, uh, if you're in high school, it's like the, the dudes, they really stand out from the rest of the guys. And then when you go to college, um, there's a less of a gap, you know, um, everyone's good. You know, most mm -hmm. everyone, they, they all earn scholarships. Everyone's good. When you go to the NFL, like everyone is legit. You know, like you can't sleep on anybody. You know, if you're, when you're in high school, you might line up against some wide receivers and you're like, uh, you know, you should always play at your, your best, but I could cover this dude. NFL, you could get beat by anybody. You know, so it's just like bringing about your A game and being consistent, you know, all the time. Who, who was your favorite uh, wide receiver to match up with in the league? Uh, <laughs> man, I, um, I played against some big ones. I played against Randy Moss. I played against uh, Marvin Harrison. Um, I played against uh, Chad Johnson. We had some battles, you know, and they were in our division. So, but I would say number one was probably Hein Ward. Yeah. You know, play for the Steelers. They were our rival, and uh, so we used to go at it, man. It was, we we had some big time games versus. Him. And he was a at Georgia. He played quarterback a little yeah. bit, right? Yeah, he was a quarterback. But when they got to Pittsburgh, he was just kind of like an athlete. They moved him all over the place. He'd be in the backfield, play slot. Um, a good football player. I hated him. I couldn't stand him. But it was just I had respect for him. But it was just he was a tough, hard-nosed, uh, good football player. Now, speaking about, you know, you hated him. He's a wide receiver. You're a DB. You know, on the high school teams, offense and defense pretty much get along, right? Let, let them know what it's like at the next level. Once you get to college, what those practices are like. Nah, man, it's, uh, you get to the college level and then one-on-ones, uh, it's, it's a dogfight. It's a dogfight. It's about, like I said, it's about comp competing. Um, you're going to match up your best versus our best, you know, and we're going to go at it. And we're going to make each other better. We used to, when I was at SC, um, I, we had Keyshawn. And uh, so when I was a freshman, he was a senior. They matched me up against him day one. And they said, we're going to make you a dog. All right, we're going to make you a dog and we're going to make you walk off the field. And so it became, it became a situation where when I got to game day, I, I, I could cover anybody. I felt like I could cover anybody out there because I was covering the best, you know, in practice. So game day, you guys are cool, but during the week, nobody's friends, oh, right? No, we're going to go at it. Yeah. We're going to go at it, man. We used to, we're going to talk trash. Uh, we're going to talk about everybody on the field, and uh, but we're going to make each other better.
So yeah, you take notes, you guys, because when you get to college, offense and defense, you're not friends until game day. So it's, it's competition all day. And, and like Coach said, that's how you get better. Um, what's it like for you being back at the high school level coaching after coaching in the league? Yeah, um, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. I think that it's, um, you know, even though it's getting a little more business, like it's like almost the rarest, um, pure form of football. The kids are genuinely playing it because they love football. You know, and the higher you get up, it becomes a business. You know, and uh, and I enjoy teaching it at that level. I enjoy coaching at that level. But it's just these kids and just enjoy playing football, and so it's just pure, and that, and that's what makes it special. So you on the bus to the games? Oh yeah, I'm on yeah. the bus. I'm, I'm doing it just like everyone so does else. It, so did it, did it just bring you back, man? Getting on that bus ride? No, no I, I enjoy it, man. I enjoy it. It takes me back to the days when I was in high school, and uh, you know, you're on that bus ride and you you know getting your mind right and so uh, I, I enjoy it I love being out there with the kids now you're a, a, a coach but you're stepping back from seven on seven you don't coach out in seven on seven w what's it mean for you to have that break yeah it, it means a lot you know um, you know not only I have Dyson but I got twin girls 10 year olds so um, it's an opportunity for me to spend time with them and support them and, um, you know, in their uh, everyday things. You know, I got one that plays volleyball, one that she just likes doing art, you know, so I'm going to be there. I'm going to support the art thing. I'm going to support the volleyball. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure my, my wife enjoys me being home a little bit, too. Man, definitely. I know she does, man. Um, always good having pops around. Um, now, Dyson's got one more year left. Um, let's f flash forward to this year, you know, who are some of those guys you know? I mean, I'm sure you could watch a player make one play yeah. and know if he's a next level guy, yeah. you know? Um, who are some of those guys on the Amat team who you think their recruiting is gonna skyrocket this year? Yeah, um, I think, uh, you know, we kind of mentioned it before, but Tobin, I think Tobin, our quarterback, um, just a heady kid, smart, very competitive, tough kid. Um, I think Kyron Hayes has big time potential. Uh, big body receiver, you know, um, who I think is just, just he's just tapping the surface of um, the potential that he has. Um, we just got a, um, a transfer, um, Kenya Dorsey from Rancho Verde, and I think he has big time potential. And then um, and I also, also say uh, Donovan Clinton, uh, maybe a little undersized or whatever, but I think maybe a kid that um, uh, if a school is willing to take a chance on a guy that just works hard, you know, and uh, and just puts in the work, you know, he's also a guy that has maybe that potential. With recruiting, it, it, there's never really like a rhyme or reason, it seems like, right? So one school will offer for a certain reason, another school will offer for a completely different reason. You know, to the parents out there, to the players out there, the guys who aren't getting that those looks or that exposure, how do they put themselves in position to start gaining that attention? Yeah, I think that um, there's a couple ways. I think obviously huddle is big now, so you know, do your homework. You know, um, shoot your huddle out to these uh, to these different. Speaking schools. of huddle, how should their tape break down? You know, yeah. should, is there a certain length on the tape? Is there a certain order of the plays that yeah. they need to do? I definitely think that you put you want to put something that's gonna grab their attention at the beginning. You know, like if, when I watch huddle films, you know, if you if it doesn't grab your attention at the beginning, you usually not gonna watch the rest of it. You know, to me, I think you could probably knock it out within like that first two minutes or that first minute and a half, if you don't grab my attention, most people are probably gonna turn it off. So definitely the order that you put it in, um, shoot it out to these universities. You know, I know a lot of these guys, that, like I said, they're gonna check it out, you know, and they'll put it on there, out on Twitter or, you know, Instagram, and they'll sit there and they'll look at it, you know, and um, I think, you know, you also could do some of these uh, unofficial visits, you know, if it's that important to you, get your kid on the campus. And nowadays what these schools do is they're gonna do hide and wait, you know, they, they're not gonna take your word for it that their kid is sick, Six five and you know two hundred seventy pounds. Get them on campus. You know they'll check them out. They're gonna do the eye test. You know and uh, that gets maybe their foot in the door. You know at least um, they can look at them and then go from there. Now what does that show a coach? What does that show a university when you're willing to come on the campus on your own? Yeah, I think there's also just your your true interest in that school. You know especially like you know, let's say you're a West Coast kid but then you're willing to travel to somewhere down south or the east coast. I think sometimes those schools might not um, might not uh, recruit guys, you know, in certain areas because they don't have that success. But if you're willing to go out there, then they're saying like, oh man, they might be willing to come out this way. So, um, and I think that, you know, like I said, that gets your foot in the door and they, they get to um, get their eyes on you. Now, um, talking about, you know, your career coming up, you know, from, High school, college, NFL, what, what were your biggest moments? Like at Amat, at SC, 
and Cleveland. Yeah. Um, at Amat, I'll probably say we, you know, we won the championship when I was a sophomore. Uh, we beat Loyola in the championship uh, in a tough game, and so I'll probably say that was one. I, you know, I got to start both ways that year, so that was, you know, that was big time at Amat. Um, you know, going to SC, um, played in a lot of big games, but as a freshman, same thing. I got to start in a Rose Bowl when we beat Northwestern, and uh, I got to score the touchdown in that game, so that stands out. And then NFL. Um, you know, to be honest, man, like all the games were special, but I would just say draft day was probably the biggest thing. You know, like um, I worked so hard and that was my goal and dream since I could ever could remember. So um, just draft day, just it becoming reality, you know, that I had worked and put myself in position, you know, um, to get drafted. I felt like that was probably the most special. So you said that was the day that you dreamed of from from a youngster, right? What, when was it when you were when you were young? When, what was that day where you said, this is what I want, this is my goal? Do you yeah. remember that when you made the decision kind of in your head? Um, I would probably say it had to be roughly around eighth grade. You know, I, you know, I grew up watching football games all the time, but I just felt like it was probably around eighth grade where I was just like, you know what, like, I'm gonna do this. Like, where I really tr truly felt like, you know, I could make it there. I'm not just watching the games. Like, I could see myself being on that field, you know. So, um, like I said, it's, it's not only having that vision, but then at the same time, like I said, you got to put in the work. You know, I always tell Dyson, um, you can't put in C plus effort and get A plus results. They don't work like that. You know, if you want A plus results, then you gotta go out there and bust your butt and give A plus work when you're going out there, whether you're working on conditioning on your technique or, you know, whatever part of your game it is, you gotta put in that work. And in, in, in the classroom too, right? No I doubt. mean, especially, yeah. No and I like to say, if you're not a competitor in the classroom, you know, you're not really a competitor because you can't just choose to be a competitor in certain aspects of your life and not others, you know no, what I mean? No doubt. With, uh, my mom's a teacher, so she was always hard on me when it came to uh, to school. I didn't work as hard as, um, as Dyson has. Um, he's put himself in a position where schools like Notre Dame's and the Yale's and uh, Northwestern's and, you know, staff they're recruiting him hard and he's putting him in positions where you know you could be successful on the field and off the field would you like to see Dyson potentially you know at a Stanford at a Notre Dame you know top you know academic institutions in the world without a doubt man without a doubt especially like I'm looking at it hindsight you know where I've been to the top you know when it comes to um, the football level and uh, my thing is that I know there's life after football and there's a lot of guys that make you know they go to the NFL and they make a good living there's a lot of guys that make it there and they don't make a good living because they're not smart with their money so if you could put yourself in a position to go to a Stanford go to a Notre Dame make those connections you know and uh, and provide a better future for your family I'm, I'm all for it now like you said you, you you might not be at a mop forever you know Dyson's gonna be a senior next year um, say we flash forward and, and you're not there you know why should a kid come and play for coach Steve Haggerty yeah. um, I think the biggest thing about uh, coach Haggerty about Ahmad is um, you know we get the most out of our kids, you know. Um, like you said, you could sit there and you could look at the rosters of some of these other schools out there that just, if you look at the rosters, they should just beat us every day. We go out there and bang with everybody, you know, and uh, our league, you know, we have a tough league where I think a lot of the other schools, they probably have more talent overall. Uh, we bang with all of them, you know, so we, I think, um, we get the most out of our kids. You so know, you they, feel you guys have like the underdog approach? Always. Yeah. Always. And you know, like I said, because, you know, if you just look at rosters, you look sideline to sideline, almost never you would pick us. You know, and like I said, we go out there, the kids work hard. Um, you know, I think we get the most potential out of the kids, you know, and uh, we get our kids to the next level. You know, it might not be the same numbers, but I feel like the kids that are deserving to go to the next level and work for it and have that uh, ability, we get them there. Now you were talking about, you know, before we started the interview about playing your whole career in Cleveland. And, you know, my first thought is, is, you know, were you there during the years LeBron was there? Um, so talk about that experience, because like you said, you got a chance to watch him, you know, before he went to the league. What was the Cleveland LeBron James experience like? Yeah, well, I, I got drafted in 99 and I remember going to Cavs games and you could literally walk into the arena and there was no one there. Like you could literally just buy a regular ticket and walk straight down to the sideline. And then I, I, roughly, I think 03, LeBron came around. I remember hearing about him, 
you know, at high school. So me and my teammates, we would go. And I, I watched them play in high school two or three times. So would they realize NFL players are at their games? Oh, yeah. yeah. No, it was Everyone was there. Yeah. It was college kids. It was all types of guys. So they, they knew. There was, uh, there'd be some of the Indian players, you know, from baseball. And everyone was there to watch, uh, watch LeBron. And then when he ended up getting drafted to Cleveland, um, those same seats that you could just walk down to, sold out. Sold out. The arena was sold out. Um, the, it just lit up the whole city. You know, uh, downtown Cleveland was kind of slow. wasn't a lot of business. Or well, it changed when he came. It just changed the whole vibe of the city. You know, so it was exciting seeing him come, uh, come up. You know, from that level and getting better and better and just blow up to what he is today. Now you you were in the area for you know for eight years, so you saw it. Like you, like you said, you go from, you know, not a ghost town, but go from something where not a lot of people were there to something really active. But as far as the community development goes, you know, the LeBron James Foundation, they do a lot for those kids around the area. You know, you saw that from the beginning too when it didn't exist compared to now. You know, what's LeBron James legacy like in that area from everything that he's done outside the game? Yeah, um, huge, huge. Like I said, you went from, you could go downtown Cleveland and just, um, just the whole economy. You know, um, it's just the restaurants, the businesses in that area. Um, and I, like I said, just all the stuff that he's done for these kids. And uh, I think it creates hope. You know, I think it creates hope, you know, and just the whole uh, atmosphere and uh, the outlook on how kids approach, uh, approach school, you know, them maybe, you know, believe, not believing they have hope. And then once he came around and started pr providing all these opportunities, now they believe that they can get out, you know, and be successful. So it's just changing the mindset is a big time thing. No doubt. Now, um, speaking of changes, right, we have a big time changes coming in 2021 with the, the whole likeness rule with the NCAA. Um, what's your advice been to your son, you know, to Dyson in regards to that in the next level? Is that a conversation that you guys have had yet? Yeah, um, we've talked about it a little bit and I'll probably have a little more insight. Uh, one of my best friends and actually a high school uh, teammate of mine, Ramogi Huma, he's been the main one to push for this. He was talking about this back when we were in high school. And um, and he's the president of the NCPA that's pushed for this. Um, but the thing is, is that I just told him is that this might be an opportunity for these guys to um, to better themselves and take advantage of, you know, all the hard work they get in. You know, and, and I think it's uh, well deserved. You know, um, I think that these college kids uh, produce a lot of money for these universities and uh, and they should be able to, um, to uh, produce and get stuff from it. Now, taking advantage of your likeness, you know, the first thing that you think of is influencers and Instagram and social media, right? So what's your advice to some of the guys right now who are coming up and how should they kind of manicure their social media or their social platform so that they could be more ready and more prepared for the change? I've always told um, any of these student athletes to be careful what they put on social media. You're, um, um, that's what, how people view you. You know, and maybe one thing that you tweet out the way that you, it might be misunderstood or whatever, but basically that is your problem. Or like Josh Allen, right? He was in the draft and these old tweets are coming up, right? Oh yeah, nah, I tell them, that's, uh, that's, that's your product, all right? That's your resume, that's what you're putting out there. And uh, so when you put it out there, you don't know who's gonna see it. You know, your future boss, you know, you might, your future employee, um, uh, employer, you know, might see that. So I just said, just make sure that everything that you put out there is something that you want everyone to see and um, is basically something that says something about you, you know, and what the product that you're trying to put out there. I mean, they're going to unearth it at some point, man. Everything on the Internet, you know, it doesn't disappear. So, but man, Dylan McCutcheon. You know, NFL NFL vet, man, SC legend. Um, not not too many times we have somebody like you in the studio, but I appreciate you, man, definitely for coming on the show LA. And just appreciate you, you know, as a father, man, raising your son to be such a great guy, so humble. Uh, maybe one day, you know, with our new uh, CIF Southern Section show, we'll have your daughter who plays volleyball on our new show, you know. But I appreciate you, man, and uh, thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thanks. All right, guys, that's it. Thanks for watching episode 18 of the show, L.A. I uh, mean, I can't believe we're already at episode 18. Yeah, it seems cool. like, nice. yeah, the first one was like last week, man. But we appreciate your guys' continued support at the show LA on Instagram, at the HSFB show on Twitter. But go ahead and show some love, uh, hit that subscribe button, go ahead and throw up some comments, like the video, but please support. We appreciate you guys and we couldn't do it without you.